Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I'm gonna to be talking about all of the books that I will hopefully be reading next month in October. I put a heavy emphasis on the word hopefully. <laughs> um, there are quite a few books on this list. A lot of them are shorter length. Um, so I'm like, hoping that will work in my favor. September, you're gonna see in my September wrap up, September was not my month for reading. I don't wanna say it's a reading slump. I don't think it's a reading slump. I am in a poor mood in general and it's affected my reading. And I read things and I'm like, yeah, that's fine. It was okay. Um, and then I just don't feel like reading anything at all. <laughs> um, I feel like reading definitely turns your brain off in some aspects. Reading is escapism for a lot of people. And recently reading hasn't been my form of escapism. Um, so that's what happened in September. I want to shift that into October and I'm gonna pick up books that I think are gonna be really fun or books that I think I'm going to love in October. And I'm really excited for the two readathons that are happening that I am co-hosting in October. I'm gonna talk about my TBRs for both of those. So I'm gonna read a bunch of monster alien stuff novellas. I'm pumped. I really want this month to change my reading mood. I wanna get back into like really loving what I'm reading. I'm also working on some other things right now. So I think that's why it's affecting my reading. I'm doing these other things instead of reading. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, let's get into these books. So I did make a graphic. I'm going to post it on my Instagram probably today. So you can go check that out if you watch this video the day it comes out, but I do make graphics on Instagram, like templates for like your TBR and stuff. So I made one, um, and then geared it towards what I wanted it to look like. Um, it's pretty bare because the majority of my TBR is actually for the two readathons that I'm going to be participating in in October. First is the Monster Mash readathon that I'm co-hosting with a bunch of other lovely ladies. I'll tag them all down below. Please go check out their channels um, where we're going to be reading a bunch of uh, monster romances and I'll get into my TBR in a second. Um, and same thing goes with the Novellathon, which I think this is the third round we've done the Novellathon um, with my lovely sweet friends. Again, I'm tagging them down below. I love them with my whole heart. Um, and it's a week long readathon where we read novellas and this theme, this season is spooky themed. So I'm gonna try and read a bunch of monster novellas and we have different prompts and stuff like that. So um, first though, I wanted to talk about the books that don't correlate with either of those readathons because I do have some books that I want to read outside of that. There are definitely books like that I'm interested in that aren't going to be on this list, but these are the ones that I'm wanting to read like hopefully the most that I think I will be able to pick up. There are a few arcs that I am anticipating on reading um, this month, but I don't want to really tap into a lot of those um, because how I've been reading ebooks have not been working for me. <laughs> ebooks haven't really been. I'm only really been in the reading mood for either audiobooks or books I can finish in one sitting, so novellas. So um, ebooks have been few and far between for me because of my mental state right now. I just can't focus my mind wanders to things it shouldn't <laughs> instead. Um, so anyway, let's get into first the eight books that I picked that are not a part of the two readathons I'm a part of. I have to talk about a new release. This one comes out on October 10th and I am dying to read it. I'm going to be probably reading it the day it comes out. This is Better Hate Than Never by Chloe Liza. I am so excited for a new Chloe Liza book. I love her with my whole body. Like her books mean so much to me. And so I can't wait for this one. It's another Shakespeare retelling, like the first book in the series. And I think B, the heroine from book one, this is about her sister. I don't know what it's about. I'm gonna go in blind, but I'm gonna read anything ever that comes out by this author. So mark your calendars for November 10th. Another new release that I really wanna read is Forever Crushed by Amber Page. This one comes out on October 17th. This cover gives me the ultimate fall vibes and I live in Texas where it is extremely hot still. Like Texas heat has not gotten the memo that it is about to be October and it feels like July still. Like it's astronomically hot here. This one gave me cute fall vibes, which I am totally in the mood for. And this couple just looks super cute. I'm just gonna read the um, tropes that the author put in the summary because I love when authors do that. So fall vibes, introvert with extrovert. It's a college romance, women in STEM, second chance slash long-term crush. 
spicy scenes, male mental health rep, witty side characters, a chaotic cat, found family, and it is in a standalone series. And she also has trigger warnings listed in the description as well on Goodreads if you wanna know those. Um, but this one just looks really cute. It looks really cute. Like totally my vibe of a romance book for sure. Then I am also participating in a read along with Jess from Peace Love Books, Christy from Christy Reads A Lot and Sam from Books with Samantha. We're all doing the Green Creek read along where we read the four books currently out in uh, TJ Klune's Green Creek series. The first book was Wolf Song. We had the live show, I think a week or two ago towards the end of September. I was not able to go to that live show and I still haven't read that book yet. So basically the whole series is on this TBR, but specifically um, Raven Song is the next live show. So that's the one I put on this list. Um, that I put on my graphic, but um, I need to read the whole series in general because all the other live shows are happening in that month as well. Again, I've been going through some things and um, I was not able to read Wolf Song at the time that the live show is going out. So I'm gonna try and catch up because the series is definitely on my TBR. I definitely wanna read it. All I know is that it's a series about werewolf shifters and MM werewolf shifter romance and their fated mates. But I don't think one of the characters is a werewolf shifter. I think he's a human possibly. Um, I don't really know anything else, but if there are like four books about this one couple, like I'm expecting to get my heart broken. So I'm excited, but I'm also not. So <laughs> this series has been on my TBR for a while and this read along is definitely giving me the push to finally pick it up. Another newer release is um, Silent Lies. This one comes out October 27th. We'll see if I get to this one by October 27th. I am on Neva's ARC team. Um, but yeah, I don't even know what this one is about. So yeah, I just know this one's coming out and I read anything by Neva, so that one's on my TBR. I bought this one for myself for my birthday and I wanna read it so badly and the audiobook is on Libby for me. So this is Fake It Till You Bake It by Janie Wesley. This just looks so cute. I love baking and these two characters looks absolutely gorgeous on this cover and I, I wanna read it so badly. Oh my gosh, okay. So this is about Jada, who is the most reviled woman in America after turning down a marriage proposal on a reality dating show. I am in my ultimatum love is blind era right now. Like I'm back in it. I'm back in it after new seasons have come out. But so like, this is definitely in my mood. And then she comes home to lick her wounds and she finds herself working at San Diego's newest cupcake bakery, Sugar Blitz, alongside the uptight owner and professional football player, Donovan Dell. Say less. Say less, I am sold for this one. I wanna read this one like right now. I do have some like paranormal, alien books, monster books that don't fit my read-alongs that I wanna read this month as well. So I finally wanna read this book. I have not read this one, Servant to the Spy Day by Ruby Dixon. I think this is an MMMF monster romance that takes place in her fantasy romance world. Um, I just haven't gotten to this one yet. I'm secretly hoping that an audiobook comes out soon, but I haven't heard any news. So I'm not going to hold out hope. <laughs> I'm gonna listen to whenever it comes out, but like I kind of love reading Ruby's books on audio like so much because she does a really good job of picking her um, narrators. Um, but yeah, I need to just stop procrastinating and read it because it looks really good. And I'm also a little worried because um, Why Choose Romances aren't really my favorite and this might either be MMMF or a Why Choose Romance, which those are not my favorite Why Choose Romances. Um, I just prefer everyone to be together <laughs> instead of like one girl only with guys individually. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, so yeah, that's all I know is that I think they're spiderish creatures. We've met them in the other fantasy romance books that Ruby has written. The next one that I have is an alien romance that is currently in my Kindle Unlimited library. This is Alien Owner by Loki Reynard. This one says, I met my human maid when she accidentally sold herself at an alien slave auction. She's half my size and she's cute when she's wrong. And she's wrong about so many things like who owns who. I'll thoroughly enjoy teaching this little human of mine who she belongs to. And by making the baby my pride demands of me, that's going to be a lot of fun too. But it's not all fun and games. The world I come from is harsh and rules and the rules of my pride are vicious. I cannot shelter her from every rough reality of my life. My alpha will have to be as strong as she is soft. She will have to bend so she does not break. I am alpha of my pride and she will come to understand her place as my mate or suffer the consequences. So it looks like this is like a darker alien romance. Interesting. Um, I'm not really into like the alpha guys. I can be every now and then, 
Um, but I think the fact that it's daily romance will definitely make it better for me, I guess. And the last one that's not a part of a read along is To Tame a Dragon by Tiffany Roberts. This is the like first book in their like dragon series. It looks really fun. It's fairly short. Like look at this new cover they have. Like it's, it's beautiful. And I just want to read more Tiffany Roberts because they write really good like monster alien romance books that are great and emotional at the same time. Those are the eight books that I have that are not a part of a read-along. So I'm quickly gonna go through the ones that I have on these two TBRs. First, I have the Monster Mash read-along. I'm gonna leave the information for both these read-alongs down below too to save time for y'all. Y'all can just look down in the description. Hannah Blackwell made some amazing graphics for this read-along, or read-a-thon, I'm sorry. And uh, you can go check out her Instagram if you wanna know, uh, see those graphics and use them. I know there's a bingo board with prompts and stuff. Personally, for me, I'm just gonna be reading a bunch of monster romances and see where they fit with the bingo board and prompts. That's usually what I do for readathons. I don't really follow the prompt. I just follow the main theme of the readathon. So I'm just gonna be reading a bunch of monster romances that are on my TBR that I'm in the mood for, and we'll see if they fill any prompts. <laughs> I have nine books here. We'll see if I get to them. But I tried to pick books that were either on audio or were quick short reads because of the mood that I'm in and the mood that I was in in September. So I'm trying to like feed into that, set myself up for success. First I have Moon Blooded Breeding Clinic by C.M. Nascosta. This is the third book in her Cambrick Creek series. Um, I currently have this one checked out on Libby. I'm gonna listen to it any day now, um, but I think this is a werewolf like a breeding clinic romance. These summaries are gonna be like one sentence because um, I got a lot of books to get through, um, but I've heard great things about this and I've read the other two books in the series and I wanna try more Sam Costa's books because I don't love them like everyone else and I wanna find one that I love. And I have that time I got drunk and yeeted a love potion at a werewolf. This is the second book of Kimberly Lemming's Mead Mishap series. Um, and I wanna continue on with the series. I love Kimberly Lemming's books and um, this one just sounds really funny. I think we have another werewolf creature. Um, so maybe I'm just gonna be reading a bunch of werewolf books for this readathon. <laughs> then is Found by the Lake Monster by Lillian Lark. I was gifted this book very kindly from Aspatia over at Asparagus's Reading for my birthday. She bought me the ebook for this, which is so sweet. I really love Lillian Lark. Um, and so this one is like just about a hundred pages. And I think uh, this woman goes to this lake and this lake monster comes out and you know what happens. Okay, I love these covers, Lillian draws them, illustrates them herself, and they're absolutely like stunning. Then is The Aliens Escape by Ella Maven. This is the second book in the Drexonian Warrior series. I think I read the first book in this series, I think a month or two ago. Um, and I want to continue on with the series and it is on audio. Like I'm trying to find alien romances, monster romances on audio to help me set myself up for success again. Um, so this one is on Libby for me to listen to. It's the second book in an alien romance series that I somewhat enjoy. I think I wanna dive deeper into this series. Next I have Blaine's Beast by Joel Abernathy. This is an MM Beauty and the Beast retelling. Yes, <laughs> yes. And this cover, oh my word. Oh my word, this cover. Um, but I've never read an MM Beauty and the Beast retelling, so I was sold. Absolutely sold. Oh, next I have Trick or Orc by S.J. Sanders. Um, I think this is like a cute, cozy monster romance, but with an orc hero as well. Like I love monster romances that can also be cute and cozy. So Ashley Bennett is like the queen of doing that, by the way, if you wanna read some cute and cozy ones for um, October, but they're also really hot, like Ashley Bennett is your way to go. So. Um, I don't really vibe well with S.J. Sanders' books. I don't know why. I've read over three of them and I've given all of them three stars or lower. I just don't care for them. I think it is because they are way too long for my taste. This one's only 151 pages. So I feel like if I were to like any of them, it's probably gonna be one of the shorter ones. So that's why this one, I'm gonna take another shot at S.J. Sanders and if this one doesn't work for me, I don't think this author is for me. She just, she just writes a lot of monster romances and the covers for them are absolutely stunning. And I wanna like them, but they're just too long for me. So I'm hoping this one is an outlier. Ooh, then I have Wed to the Lich by Lila Faye. This is her newest book in the Arranged Monster Mate series, which I love Layla Faye's books. Um, so yeah, I just put it on here cause I need to read it. Um, and it came out last month and I still haven't read it yet. I think it was on my TBR for last month too and I didn't get to it. Each book in the series is about like a mating agency that mates humans to like monster creatures. Pretty fun. I've only liked Layla Faye's books in this series. So 
take with that what you will. My next one is Released by the Kraken by Abigail Erin. Abigail <laughs> there you go. Um, this one's only like 110 pages and has something to do with Krakens. I didn't really need to know anything else on my TBR. And then my last one is Seduction of a Psychopomp. Is that how you say that? Psychopomp? I don't know. Um, but this cover reeled me in. I think one of my friends has read this. I'm not sure. I think someone I know has read this book and liked it. And the tagline for this one that I'll leave you with is, I won't live to see my 29th birthday unless I make a deal to marry death. Sounds fantastic. Sounds fantastic to me. Okay, next I have my TBR for the Novella-a-thon. This one's happening from October 16th to the 22nd. I'll leave all the information below as well. Um, Tiffany has all of the graphics on her Instagram because Tiffany made all these and they're beautiful as well. Um, so let's get into these novellas. All of them are like spooky-ish or paranormal themed. I'm really excited to read them. I also forgot to mention there is like a build your own bingo board as well with prompts that you can put on the bingo board. So again, like my last readathon I just talked about, I just like read what I want and then try and fill in the bingo board as I go along based on what I read. Um, so there's no like rules for this readathon except you just read novellas. And we did like a spooky season. You don't have to read spooky books. You can read whatever kind of novellas you want. Uh, I don't think all of these books are, no are spooky-ish or monster-ish. They might be, might not be. I don't know. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, we do have a group book if you want to read it with us. This is Hollow by C.M. Nascosta, another C.M. Nascosta book. This is a collection of two short tales of Sleepy Hollow to heat your chilly autumn nights. So sounds fun. The host of this, my girls, um, we were very excited about this one. Like we were swooning over this cover and like C.M. Nascosta's like next book cover looks beautiful as well. Um, like her covers are hitting it. Um, we were swooning over the cover and the fact that this is a Headless Horseman book, yes. Okay, so these books I have on my TBR. Let's go. Um, all of these are on Kindle Unlimited, by the way. Um, Hollow's Grove by Lee Jaquo. Lee Jaquo writes uh, novellas centered around like holidays and stuff. So this one is her um, like Halloween one. That's all I know. I don't want to know anything else. I think each of these has like a certain little aspect to it mm -hmm, about what people like certain, certain things that people like. Um, I don't know what that one is for this one, but Anyway, it looks fun. Um, next is No Place to Hide by Harper Ashley and Ren Hawthorne. I think someone said that this is like a like a scary-ish romance one, which has me like eek because uh, I don't do well with scary stuff at all. So we'll see how this one goes. But it's like 99 pages. I think these two characters like meet um, at a carnival or something and they play like a chasing game or something together. I don't know. Next is Jacked by Leila Faye. This is her book that comes out on October 3rd, October 3rd. <laughs> and um, all I know is that it has to do with the guy named Jack and it has to do with Pumpkin like her other Jack books. <laughs> so on the TBR it goes. Then is Not Today Satan by Calliope Stewart. He looks like a monster creature. So it's apparently an MF Omegaverse tale that features a plus size female main character and her relationship with Satan, which I assume has something to do with knots. So, yeah. <laughs> Next is A Bump in Boo Hail by Kimberly Lemming. This one is only 44 pages, but I love Kimberly Lemming. I said I wanted to read one of her books for the other readathon. Um, and my girlies in our group chat for the novelathon, I think all of them but me have read this one. So I need to get on it. I don't even know what it's about, but it's 44 pages. So I'm, I'm gonna fly through that. Um, next is The Dalwick Demon by Ashley Bennett. Um, I have not read this one yet by Ashley Bennett. I don't even know what this one is about. It says, in her short life, Iris has known nothing but heartache when she is thrown into the mouth of Dalwick, of Dalwick Cave as penance for her supposed crimes, she expects to find herself face to face with death. Instead, she meets the demon of Dalwick Cave. After getting to know the being behind the myth, Iris finds herself tumbling headfirst into cardinal love. Can he show her that love can be kind? Will Iris finally learn that love and lust go hand in hand? Like, yes. Okay. I haven't heard anybody really talk about this actually in a book because everyone's like all the way for the Leviathan Fitness series, which I love the Leviathan Fitness series, but like I want to read her other stuff too. I'm dying for her. The frog one that comes out this year. I want to read that one so bad. Anyway, um, <laughs> next I have Lady Venom Takes a Mistress. All I know about this one, it's an, a sapphic um, vampire romance. Yes, done, done, next. Next is Raising the Monster's Child by May Kira, Kara, 
I'm sorry, I'm butchering that. Um, but this is a monster. He looks like a, a, a rock. <laughs> I was very curious. And the fact that um, it has something to do with a baby or something. Oh, okay. So this is about Sabrina who finds a little alien in the woods in the cabin she just bought in the woods in the middle of nowhere. She finds a little baby alien creature and decides to raise it. But little does she know that the creature has a guardian and he isn't pleased. His name is Grist. And he's stranded on Earth and wants nothing more than to return to his home world with the child he's protecting. But when he encounters a human female who has been taken, who's taken on the role of the child's mother, all his plans are thrown away. Okay, yes, that sounds really good. I love like babies, a baby fever girl here. So I love babies and stuff. Um, next is Pull Me From The Deep by Christina M. Can Canales, Canales. I don't know anything about this, but this cover, holy crap, y'all. This cover, it has to do with tentacles or something and like a sea creature, so. Yeah. Then I have a Jenica Snow book. I want to read more Jenica Snow books because they're really fun. This is The King, which um, I think is a Faded Mates paranormal romance. Um, and apparently the heroine Luna, who is an unexperienced vampire, maybe gets mated to the King of the Scottish Lycan, so werewolves. And he's like 200 years old. It's a forbidden age gap. Seems really fun. And the last one that I have is I need to put a Jessica Kane on this list. I'm probably gonna read a Cassie Mint book that's not on this TBR though. Know me, Cassie Mint novellas. Yes. Okay. I don't know which one yet though. Um, I think she's coming out with some Halloween ones, spooky-ish ones. I'm not sure. But Blast from the Past by Jessica Kane is the one on this TBR. Okay. Apparently this is a time travel romance where Shiloh touches a magical tree and a shirtless rancher from 1949 arrives, still holding onto his cowboy hat and calling her sugar and claims to be her man. Like, say less, say freaking less. Cowboy, time travel, yes. Anyways, there you have it. Those are the very many books in my TBR. A lot of them are like 100 page novellas. Um, so we'll see what I get to. Um, my TBRs are always overly ambitious, um, but I'm really planning in October to like, put myself out in the world a little bit more and go places and see people and do things. And so I think it might be a good thing that I don't maybe read as much because I kind of want to dip my toe into experiencing life more. So I guess I can look forward to that. That's not a bad thing. Um, so yeah, <laughs> anyways, um, let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the jack-o'-lantern emoji in the comment section down below. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.